The joy of movement is one of those things that if you can pull it off in a game, makes the game instantly better. Wavetail with its surfing, diving, gliding, and propelling definitely captures that feeling and made the game a great experience just on that front. Thankfully, that's not all that Wavetail did well, as it also had a likable cast, great visuals and music, fun challenges, and a well-developed world. If you're looking for a colorful world with a short but complex story, a fun lead character, and a lot of water to surf around on, Wavetail is definitely the game for you. Wavetail is an action-adventure game developed and published by Thunderful Games, whose games you've probably heard of if you haven't played them. I discovered Wavetail via its Steam demo, which is still up, so check it out, and then decided to see if I could get a code for the game, which I was granted. The game will come out tomorrow, December 12th, for Switch, PS5, PS4, and PC, and the 13th for Xbox One and the Xbox Series, so plenty of options for where to get the game. In the meantime, since this is an indie title, wishlisting is the best way to show interest and get the game seen by more people. You might want to know more, though, before you make that call, so let's talk about the premise of Wavetail. The world of Wavetail is mostly underwater, but it didn't used to be that way. Before our protagonist Sigrid was even born, a disaster befell the city of Strandville and plunged it into the depths below the waves. At the same time, the gloom appeared, taking up more and more land and water, forcing the few survivors to rely on Sparklight to drive it back and living in fear of it coming ever closer. Our main character Sigrid lives with her mechanically savvy but gruff grandmother on a lonely island. One day though, after a dangerous incident involving the gloom, Sigrid makes a new connection to a mysterious underwater shadow. That shadow allows Sigrid to walk, but more importantly, run and surf along the water. With her newfound powers, Sigrid is now able to travel further than ever before, and alongside her grandmother and the many people she meets along the way, she can try to help people. She can discover more about how the world is now, how it was before, and how it came to be, all while trying to defeat the gloom once and for all. As I said before, the game is on the shorter side. I completed it in around six hours, but the game packs a lot into its story during that time. Sigrid's journey in particular is moving with a strong coming-of-age element, the mystery around her mother's disappearance, and finding her strength. Thematically, the game explores loss and reconciliation, as the Steam page says, but also elements of generational trauma and how younger generations have to deal with the hurt and harm caused before they were even born. All this while also remaining a charming story with lots of sweet and even funny moments. I was seriously impressed by the writing and the broad cast of characters with varied personalities and backgrounds that I encountered over the course of this journey. This careful story planning also carries over to world building. The game does a great job of delivering the premise in a clear way early on and using that foundation to build out the complexity as the game goes along. Each character with their new perspective and experience adds layers onto what this world is and was in the past, and we are discovering it right alongside Sigrid. The elements of the world are put together really well and each new revelation encourages further contemplation on what it means for the world as a whole and our characters now. Now, there isn't filler to this story, everything ties back to the main narrative, at least with the regular dialogue and cutscenes, but the game has another way to add details that may not fit with the overall narrative. Sigrid has a journal that she writes in over the course of the journey. As you're exploring around, there are pages that you can find to add to that journal. These can include items from before the disaster that explore life before, and mementos of people both strangers to Sigrid and close to her. That, on top of the character notes that Sigrid writes anytime she meets a new person, adds further detail, and I think they are great to give a read when you have the chance. The pages in particular add an incentive to explore around the various islands to find them, and the main reason I think I would jump back into the game would be to find those pages I haven't found yet because the details are so fun to add on to my understanding of this world. The main gameplay loop involves Sigrid traveling to an area on the map and trying to undo what the gloom has done to the area. This means fighting off the dark enemies that appear on the map, clearing out gloom infested areas, freeing trapped people, and then helping to reactivate the systems of the area. The main story quest line is very clear about what you need to do, so the challenge for you is just doing it. Mainly this involves using Sigrid's powers to access areas inaccessible to most everyone else and platforming around on land or surfing along at sea. There is some side content that comes up after you've freed people from the gloom. Some of them have lost family members or items and ask for your help finding them. When you do, you get a reward of the game's currency. 
That currency can only be used in one place though to buy new hair colors and outfits for Sigrid. Basically, it's only cosmetic, but not in a microtransaction way, which is a relief. The tasks asked are usually pretty simple though, so most of the time I did it, and at least some of them can be found while traveling to the main quest line, so they're convenient as well. Speaking of travel, the movement of the game is a major selling point. I had a great time because of the variety of ways Sigrid can travel, the smoothness of the controls, and also how you can chain different movement styles together for an even better experience. Mainly Sigrid is serving around, but you can also use built up power to catapult yourself from the water into the air, dive back and swim in the water and jump out again. On top of that, you can glide using Sigrid's wooden spark net as a propeller, then you have all the convenient slides and shoots that you can use to swing yourself around, plus some bouncy pads. These are prevalent on the routes you travel between the different areas to make the travel more fun, and also in your main missions as you go around on land, up buildings and around landscapes. The game is built around this motion, and it is so fun to work with. The biggest other piece of side content takes great advantage of this with Asta's challenges. In these challenges, you'll be tasked with reaching a particular spot within a certain amount of time. You can collect time boosts as you complete the challenge, but it will require using particular movement skills to collect them. The last challenge in particular stretched my mastery of the movement of the game wonderfully, and I felt very accomplished once I finally succeeded. There are only four of them, but you can always go back to them and see if you can get a better time than the last time. The combat of the game is very simplistic. There are only a few different enemies, and you can take them down by hitting them repeatedly. There are some charged moves you can do, but standard attacks are enough to take most of them down. The one thing that's different is when you face the striders on the water. These enemies require you to move around on the water, propel upwards, and then do quick aerial combos to finish them off. Still pretty simple to take them down, but that one at least utilizes the wonderful water movement of the game. While the game might have benefited from a more robust combat system, the combat encounters are not really the focus of the game, and they were fine enough so it didn't negatively impact my enjoyment of the game. The game's replay value, I think, mainly falls into the few bits of side content with the pages to collect and challenges to complete. Thankfully, the game does have a free roam mode once you've completed it that allows you to go back and do this, but I think for the most part this is a really tight and enjoyable experience once. I'm kind of hoping they revisit this world in a future game because I did find myself wanting more once I had finished the main story, and there's a lot they could do with it, but we will just have to see. Presentation-wise, the game is absolutely gorgeous. The art style is vibrant and is one of those stylized games that I think is going to age really well. It just has that timeless feel to it. The horizons and water are beautifully colored and rendered, and the character designs have variety and personality baked into them. Plus, Sigrid gets so many outfits to pick from, so you can have a lot of fun with that if you want. I wish I could play the music in the video like I usually do, but alas, I am unable to. But trust me, it's quite good. In the meantime, enjoy water-related tracks from other games. The voice acting enhanced my connection to the characters, and while I didn't know many of the performers, they did an excellent job, so kudos to them. That leads me, though, to the less fun side of this section. The technical issues. Nothing was ever bad enough that I couldn't complete the game, but the game stuttered on numerous occasions. I found this happened most often when there were characters talking and I was in motion traveling around the world. It would lead to one or both of these things happening. Either the dialogue would stutter and go robotic for a moment, and or the motion would get interrupted. I hope it gets cleaned up at some point, but for now the performance issues mean I recommend seeing how the demo runs on your PC before committing wholeheartedly to the game. My PC is on the older side, but it does run pretty much every game reasonably well, which is why I found this notable. On the UI and UX side of things, the game is pretty clear about what's going on and what you need to do, with a couple exceptions. The side content usually isn't noted on the minimap, so you need to do some proper exploring to find out where items or people are, but it's not frequent and most of the time it's right where you are, so it's not too difficult to find that stuff. I did also run into one issue where the game didn't give a button prompt, so I had to trial and error to figure out what I was supposed to do, but otherwise the game is usually clear and easy to navigate. Wavetail was a great game with a wonderful thematic story, exhilarating motion, and a pretty art style that will make the game stand out. While the game's occasional technical glitches aren't great to see, the quality of the rest of the game is evident and I'm hoping the issues are cleared up with a patch soon. 
As the final game released in 2022 that I will play this year, I think Wavetail was a great way to cap off the year, and if you're looking for something that will move you, I recommend Wavetail. You don't want to miss out on this one. Thank you to Thunderful for the review code. Before you go on to whatever your next adventure is, consider giving this video a like so you can help me beat back the gloom of the YouTube algorithm. Comment below your thoughts on Wavetail, and subscribe if you haven't already to keep up with the channel moving forward. Have a great day, and happy gaming. Thank you.